We're down in the eastern parts of Richmond, down on the sort of the banks of the Yarra. It was the site um, formerly known as Richmond Abattoirs. It began in 19, early 1900s and ran until I suppose the early early 80s, early 1980s. I heard about this site through friends, whispers on the station about a, a gallery of graffiti that was slowly happening, a very quiet, underground-ish type movement. We caught the train down to Burnley Station, off behind us, and came over here, I think a fence similar to this, or the one a little bit further down, and found a gap in it, hopped in. You'd go crunching over glass and old asbestos boards and corrugated iron and so forth, and slowly through the smaller chambers downstairs, the offices, that had been taken over, beautiful clean kind of office walls with bright sparkly paint across them. You find a staircase that would lead up onto another floor, a, a larger chamber would open up and then up right up to the top which was a huge sort of 80 metre long chamber with a 15-20 metre high ceiling, brown brick, 1920s, 1930s and the backdrops were just spectacular. You don't get to see graffiti like that at that scale anywhere I've come across. I'm sure they go on quietly around Melbourne now, but less and less. And it was kind of the, the gallery, non-gallery, in a way. The Burnley Abattoir site is a really interesting place in Richmond that has a long and complicated kind of history Back in the 19th century, around 1865, the site was opened as an abattoir. And in the 19th century, a lot of inner city suburbs had their own abattoir. Later, they would have their own um, electricity works. Often, they would have their own brickworks. And a lot of these industrial sites from the 19th century, eventually, through the 20th century, fell vacant. They became abandoned buildings. And in the shells of these buildings, often some really creative activities happened. From the mid-1980s, graffiti was arriving in Melbourne from New York and graffiti writers were embracing these new forms of expression and looking for spaces in which to practice their skills. And the abattoirs became um, an early site for graffiti culture. It became a kind of a hall of fame where graffiti writers could practice for hours on end. Um, they weren't interrupted by the police or members of the public. They had an opportunity to really focus on the style and the skills of graffiti. One of the interesting things that happened in that site was the quality of the artwork that was produced. There was a lot of blank walls, there was a lot of interesting spaces to respond to, and the graffiti at the time, big, highly ornamentalized murals, very colorful, lots of detail, in a way looked like they were responding to the abattoir site itself. Many of them look like they're made up of the kind of broken glass that we see scattered around on the floor. The pipes and the broken brickwork also seems to relate to the kind of shapes um, and the twisted letters that were part of graffiti culture at the time. Melbourne's in the midst of a, a big change from being largely an industrial economy to becoming a post-industrial economy. We, we don't just make objects um, anymore, often we make ideas, we're part of an information kind of age. And that change has led to a big change in how many buildings are used and has meant that across the city, uh, particularly now in the inner city and the suburbs, there are large industrial buildings that are lying vacant, waiting to be turned into something else. These industrial sites across the city are still used for people to practice graffiti. We can still see popping up these informal galleries, often kind of halls of fame where people will go to produce their best kind of work. Often people find out about these sites through word of mouth, they're, they're not advertised, they're, they're kept secret, and they remain, uh, many of them, quite dangerous uh, places. Often they have asbestos or other dangerous chemicals, um, and getting into and out of these sites can be um, very difficult. So there's always a, a risk and a challenge in um, getting access to these wild spaces.